when you absolutely, positively, have to animate your camera from point A to point B in the coolest way possible, then the sniper add-on is your friend. However, you might want a more leisurely approach to flying. Today, I'll be looking at recreating the oldest form of movie transport there is, travel by map. We will use freely available artwork to create our map, which is Creative Commons License Zero. To add a bit of interest, we will make a relief effect, raising the surface of the map randomly to give it some character. Finally, we'll animate the camera to follow a path to fly across the world. For this tutorial, I'll be using Blender 2.74, but any recent version of Blender should work perfectly OK, and we'll be using the Cycles Render Engine. Well, first of all, we need to get rid of the default cube. We don't require that. I might move this lamp down a little bit closer to my working surface. And we need to ensure that I have the import images as planes add-on working. Now, if we add a mesh and we go down to images as planes, then I can navigate to the artwork that we are going to use today. Let's change the display to material view so that we can see the image mapped. Might scale this up. Place that light a little bit closer. Now I would like to add some interesting surface details to our map. Let's drag up a node window. Let's change the display to rendered. I'm going to try adding first a texture noise. And the texture noise, I might add some scale of 11 and detail set to 10. We'll plug that into our displacement. So now we get this sort of paper surface, but I'd like to have a little bit more detail in fact. So let's duplicate this with Shift D. Let's change the scale to seven and the detail to zero. And we'll mix this value going down to the converter into math, we'll mix it as an add. And now we get a lumpier surface than we had before. A little bit of a relief texture. Hmm, sort of looks like a parchment to me. Okay, so now we've finished with the materials. Let's see about navigating our little ship around the coast of this island and landing up here where I think there might be treasure. What I might do first is clear my location and orientation of the camera. So with Option or Alt, let's press G for location, just like G for drag or grab. There it is, and it's reset that to zero. Let's also clear the rotation with, you guessed it, Option R or Alt R for rotation, and that's cleared its rotation. Now it's located at origin zero in Blender World Space. Now if I add another object like a curve, Blender will place its origin at the same relative location to the new curve. Let's add a curve, and it's going to be a path. I might scale that down, and let's edit this path so that the camera can fly around the map. You'll notice that the path is dipped somewhat underneath the surface of the map. We'll fix that in a moment. Press 3 to go into side view, 5 to get orthographic view. Let's select some of these with the B key, drag those up, and this node as well. Back to the top view. So this will be the path that the camera will take. The handy thing about animating camera over a path is that at any time during your uh, other animation processes, you can easily edit this path to redirect the camera, make it go in a slightly different direction. Now we need to select the camera. Press Z to show wireframe view. Let's select the camera and let's change its constraint. The constraint is the little uh, chain link up here. We want to add a follow path 
constraint. We need to decide what path to follow. That's easy. It's the NURBS path that we've created. I would like to animate the position of the camera along this path. So I've turned on fixed position, so I get to tell it exactly where to place the camera. I'm going to keyframe the first position with the I key on the offset. Now let's move down to about 100 and frame 180. And let's move the offset along to its rest position and create another keyframe with the I key. And now, along there, it's a perfect motion. Of course, I can change keyframes at any point to slow or hold the position of the camera along that curve. Now, you'll notice that the camera is pointing down. That's not very helpful. Why don't we give the camera something to look at? Let's press Shift S to snap the cursor to the center and we'll add an empty. Let's choose an empty of a sphere. Sometimes it's easier to locate on the screen than an empty made of plane axes. Let's turn back on our material view. Go into top view with the seven key and drag this down to maybe this icon on our map. Let's jump back out of our material view and click on our camera again. We're going to add a new constraint, the track to constraint. And this time I want to track to the newly created empty. Oh dear, it seems to be pointing away from the empty. Look at this, all the way along. That's no good, it doesn't like the empty. Let's change its orientation. Make it minus Z and point it up on the Y axis. And now we can see that it is tracking that empty quite well. And if I move the empty, the camera will follow the location of the empty on screen. Great, so now we have two ways of animating the camera. We can move the camera in space around the map and we can change where the camera is looking at any given time. Terrific. Now let's move on to animating a path for our little craft to follow. Here's the little boat that will sail around the coast and in order to travel by a map, we have to create a small path for it. So let's create a new path. Go back up to curves and create a bezier. Oh dear, we want this to be um, centered. So we'll clear that uh, location with Alt-G. I might scale this down somewhat and we want to edit it as well. So we can grab the editing vertices of our path and move them at will. Let's turn the map back on. We don't want rendered view, we want material view. So here we go. We want to end up in this cove up here. We'll rotate that with the R key. And rotate this vertex with the R key. Select them all and let's subdivide it. And uh, let's subdivide it again. So we have some more edit points for our ship to travel up the coast. I think he'll hug the coast quite well here. Let's make this a bit longer. Change this curve a bit so he drives around the side of the coast, avoiding those islands. And there we go. We should arrive quite nicely in this protected cove to find treasure. Now we have a nice, nicely defined path. What we want to do next is actually add some geometry to the path to follow. Let's add a new plane and it's already centered in the world space. Let's scale that down somewhat. Don't make it a negative size. Scale it right down. And now we want to make it follow this path. Let's add a modifier to our geometry. First of all, let's make an array. We'll come back to that later. And next, let's add a curve to deform it. Which curve shall we deform it by? Well, of course, the Bezier curve, which we just created for the um, little circumnavigation of the island. Now you'll notice that if I increase the count, we can traverse the curve. And if I change the relative offset, we can get a gap between our dots. That's handy, isn't it? However, you'll notice that it's not heading in the right direction. 
our boat's down here, we want to go the other way. How can we do that? Well, if you've set up the curve incorrectly as I have, what you can do is pop into edit mode with the tab key and then hit the space bar. Type in switch direction. Now you'll notice that the arrows all point in the other direction. Click on the geometry, our small plane, and now you can animate the value of the numbers of the array. So we'll start back here at zero, put a keyframe there, move up to say 140. Let's add more of these back. We don't want to go off the end. I for another keyframe. And now for the duration of our animation, we get a growing path. And of course we can edit this path as well. Only thing left to do now, I guess, is to animate the location of our viewing empty. I would like to leave it on this icon on the map first. So let's press I key for location. Let that drag through. Not seeing any of the geometry, so perhaps in this view that the plane is below the page. Let's go to three, it's a side view, and perhaps it is. So let's click on the curve and drag it up. Click on our geometry, drag it up to match the curve. Back to top view, material view. That's better now, I can see it. But what can the camera see? Well, let's tab through key zero to see what the camera is looking at. I can see from the camera view that the field of view does not incorporate the boat or the path really. So let's edit the field of view. We could of course make the camera wider, but what I choose to do in this case is actually edit its path. So do you remember the path that we had to choose? That's right, it's this NURBS path. Let's edit that, so tab into edit mode, and we'll grab that position and move it back. Let's put on box to lock this view so that it happens in all views. Right mouse click and drag that back like this. And let's raise this up so we can see more of what's happening on this map. There we are. Tab out of edit mode. Now we can see our little dotted lines proceeding into the distance. At this point, I would like to animate the target object or our empty. Press the I key for location. Proceed on a little bit. Let's move it up the screen a little bit further to follow that dotted line. Press the I key again. Let's see what's happening. Going to side view might like to end up in this bay at the end where the camera is looking. So let's move that up to here. I key for a location. Let's tab out of quad view for a moment, see, see what this looks like. Hmm. It's very difficult to see these. Let's just change their material first. Naughty of me to leave that on the default material. I think good blood red for the pirate's treasure would be nice. Let's see what these pirates are up to. X marks the spot. And of course, if we're too close at the end, we could always edit that curve again. It's the NURBS path, and we want to tab into edit mode, select that last point, and drag it up. Perhaps its orientation should be further around. Let's drag that in top view, around. You can see that I'm moving around this way. Pull this one out a little bit further. So what happens now? Follow the red dots, and we zoom up and around the location of our final 
position. You can see our boat back again. Perhaps we could come around a little bit further, in fact. Tab out of edit mode. We might like to ease this animation of our empty somewhat more. So let's drag up another view. And this time we'll look for the dope sheet. Zoom this dope sheet up a little bit. And what are we looking for? The empty. So it's this object here, which doesn't start moving until this point. Let's drag that back. And now it traces up along with that path much more effectively. Let's have another look at this animation. Jump out of quad view in camera view. Back at the start, we're going to play this through, following up the coast, rotating around the final position, and there's the treasure. So there you have it, traveling by map. It's the oldest form of navigation in the movies.